Hey guys, this is Josh from Drone DJ and today we will be taking a look at the SMO 4K ultralight camera for FPV drones. So this camera is by Beta FPV with Insta360's technology in it. We will get to that in a second, but taking a look at the box, we can see the camera is four, has a 4K wide angle lens, flow state stabilization, which is found in the original 1R, HDR photo and video, and is only 30 grams, meaning it's ultra light and perfect to put on drones similar to stripped down GoPros. So taking a look at the camera, we can see that it's it's been slimmed, it's very thin. The thickest part is the um, sensor with the lens. And uh, basically all the features have been removed, leaving just the power button, record button, an SD card slot, and the and a power power plug. So since this this is meant for FPV drones, there's no battery included and it uses a a small little connector here, which means you get this in the you get this cable in the box. I've already already adjusted mine to suit my batteries, but you get a cable with this little tip on the box, which goes to uh, black, red, green, and yellow. Black and red are obviously power, and then these two control the camera if you want to connect it directly into the drone. So what you do to power it is you just plug that in. And then for mine, it this requires a 2S to a 6S battery, I think, which is about 6 volts to 27 volts. Yep. So I've taken two Beta FPV 1S 450 milliamp hour batteries. And I just plug it in like this. And then you simply just hold the power button down. Blue light comes on. You can hear noise and then a solid blue light goes on and this means there's an SD card and everything's working then you hit the record button camera starts to flash red it beeps just shows recording and now it is just recording footage so yeah so we can turn that off for now and now the interesting thing about this camera is that it seems very similar to an a strip to an Insta360 1R just stripped down. So to confirm or deny if it actually is, let's just take it apart and see what we find inside. Okay, so just before we take a look at this, we can put that to the side. You can see we have two back plates here. So from first glance, they look very similar other than this little, this little point sticking out here. So what this is, is a mounting point for the custom mount that the company's come up with to mount to the drone or like a fixed wing or anything you want. And this one doesn't have that as it uses a different type of mount that basically cups it like that for fixed wing aircraft. So these two are removable and then that comes with the drone and then the, I mean the camera and the camera also comes with a, a UV filter and a ND16 filter as well. It also comes with this screwdriver to undo all the screws and then a set of screw mounting screws and what looks to be two spare screws similar to these, same as these ones. So that's what comes in the box. Okay, now let's take a look at the camera. So taking a look at the um, circuit boards here, we can see straight away on this cable here, it says 1R Bat FPV, which means this, this little um, cable here has been specially made for this, for this camera. And you can also see that on this here, Bat FPV. Now taking a look at the circuit board itself, you can see this little connector here is unpopulated. And that looks to be what would be like the Wi-Fi or the Bluetooth antenna in the normal 1R. So from these three things, it 
to me, it kind of looks like this is just a 1R that's been stripped back, removed of like the battery, the screen, to save weight and make it perfect for like a, a racing drone or an FPV drone. Beta FPV actually says, calls this, or sorry, describes this as a sh the camera is stripped back to include just a 4K wide angle lens, the processing core, and is powered and powered by an FPV battery. So by the marketing, it kind of sounds like it is a stripped back. What Insta 361 are. And you actually find find that if you connect it to the, the app, which we'll do in just a moment, that it is in fact a one arm that's just been stripped back. So now we can close this back up and we can move on to the next part. Okay, so now that we have the camera put back together, let's turn it on and connect it to the mobile app. So before I get started with the camera, let me just screen record so you guys can see what's happening. Start recording, let that start. Plug the two batteries in, that one and that one. And now we just plug that in there. Turn that on. And now we can just let that sit over to the side. We can bring this in, put that like there. And we just scroll down. You need the Insta360 app for this, which I already have downloaded. So you just click on that. You will have to, you don't have to log in, but you can if you want to. And then to connect to the camera, you have to use the Wi-Fi connection. You can't use the um, Bluetooth as it wants it to connect via the screen, which this doesn't have. So the workaround is the, the Wi-Fi connection. So you see the 1R on the screen here. Just select that and you're connecting. First time you will have to enter a password, generic password, it's like 1234000, something like that. Insta360 app open, hit the camera button, just ignore that. And there you have it. The camera is connected. So I currently don't have an SD card in there. So that's why the blue light's also flashing. So we can just put that back down. Something like that, yep. Let's get that blue light away. There we go. So now that we have the app open, you can make some adjustments to the camera like you, you're, you usually would with the normal Insta 361R. So you have the settings, standard video, HDR, time-lapse, time shift, Resolutions is 4K 60fps, 2.7K 100, yep, and 1080p 200, I think. Yep, 1080p 200. You then have ultra wide, so you can change the field of view you have. And then log vivid, takes a little time to get in. And standard shooting modes, which adjusts the color and flattens the image a bit. And then you have the white balance plus minus and then you can change the manual control i just leave it on auto and now from the app you can also take photos this is only from the app as far as i can see as this this record button on the camera only seems to start videos so yep you can just take a photo don't have um, SD card in, so it won't work right now, but yep. And that's pretty much all you can do with the app. You can't edit footage in the app from this camera. You have to use the, um, the computer. So we'll get to that now. So now that we have the footage captured and it is on the SD card on the camera, we can move to the computer now to get the software. So what you wanna do is you wanna just go to Insta360's website Go to the Insta360 1R page and then go to the downloads page for it. And you will see Insta360 Studio 2020. So whatever Mac Windows you're operating on, you just want to click download and then let it install. 
which I've already done here. So now we want to do is we want to get the SD card out of the camera. Just like that. And put it into an SD card reader. Open the file. And now we have two video files for the one thing we captured earlier. The one is a low resolution video file and the other is a normal video file. You can see this by the size, it's, it's quite a bit different there. So what we want to do is we just, I'm just going to drag this to the desktop. Meaning we can disconnect this in a second. So now that we don't need that anymore, we can disconnect it. What is that? Go to our desktop, drag and drop the video into the editor. And so now you can see the video is already there and it's begun playing. So when we're in the editor, we can cut, crop, um, trim, trim the video here. We can join multiple videos together. That's normal editing features. And then what we want to focus on is the top right corner here. So the export and settings. So let's just go to a piece of footage. You can actually see the difference. So here we have use flow state stabilization. So this is the only way you can get stabilization into this camera is through this, through the desktop app here. So when we click play, you can see that it's on. Stop, we can turn that off and you can see it's much, much jerkier, much more jerkier without it on. So we turn that back on, get smooth again. And now we have field of view options. So Insta360 recommends that you use the FPV one as it takes away the distortion of like a wide angle lens and gives you the most, the most view to see. I think it's 120, 120 degrees of view, I think. But yeah, so you can choose ultra wide, wide, linear, which also takes distortion out just at a much smaller white field of view and narrow. So as we'll leave it on FPV. And then the next tab, media processes, Aquavision, that's for underwater filming with the original 1R. So you don't need to worry about that for this. So we can just keep that off. It adjusts the footage slightly. Um, true audio. So this does capture audio, but it's very muffled. So there's really no point of having it. So you can edit your audio to like make it sound better for depending on what you're doing. Just leave that off since we don't care about the audio for this. Just going to hear a bunch of wind noise from the drone anyway. And now file properties, it just shows you the file name, file type, the firmware of the camera, the, the actual camera itself, serial number, creation time, the file size, the resolution, the frame rate, the bit rate, and how long the clip is. So we can leave that stuff alone for now and we just click export. So for this export, just because it's here, there's AI effects. I'll turn on color plus and remove grain. So we can see how that looks. And I'll put this directly into my OneDrive. And we can, you can adjust the resolution, the bit rate. Also change it to H.265 or ProRes. We'll leave it on 264 and we can just click OK and it'll begin to render. So I'll come back to you guys once this video has rendered. Now that it's rendered, here's the footage from the camera. Now this footage does look a little shaky, but remember this camera is meant for a drone, which is much smoother when it's flying than walking around with it on the ground.
Okay, so now that you've seen the footage from this camera, you've seen how the app works and how you edit the footage on the desktop app, I have a few thoughts on this camera and a few issues that I've found. Okay, so you might, you might have noticed that there hasn't been any FPV footage on a drone from this camera yet. And the reason behind that is because the company Beta FPV doesn't sell the mounts for this. So um, I contacted them, I was like, is it possible to get some mounts? And they basically said that you have to 3D print the mounts yourself. And since I don't have a 3D printer on hand, I've had to go source someone that can 3D print them for me and those are being printed right now. So we'll see footage on a drone from the next, in the, ne ne the next video, okay. So that's one thing that's a bit odd. Why wouldn't you just include a mount? It can't be that much extra cost. So yeah, um, and the next thing is this branding. So taking a look at the name, it's it's branded as a beta FPV camera, which which to me sounds like beta FPV has created the camera and they're just using technology from Insta360. Nothing physical or anything from Insta360, just the technology. But as we've seen in the camera and in the app, it picks it up as an Insta360 1R, which to me seems like that this is just an Insta360 1R that's been stripped back. The branding of Beta FPV has been added here and on the two ribbon cables in the camera and on the box here, which is the basically the only thing that is making this a Beta FPV camera. So it's a good camera, but I think they they might need to rebrand it or re-say how it's made. So maybe a collaboration project rather than Beta FPV's camera, that might that probably work better as well. But yeah, overall the, the, the footage from this looks pretty good as it's basically a 1R. I would put this on a drone. Um, we will be having another video coming out shortly with this flying on a drone of a proper FPV pilot to see what they have to say about this. But yeah, this is the SMO 4K for FPV drones and Insta360 1R stripped back. So yeah, let me know what you guys think of this camera. Are you likely to buy it or are you sticking with what you have already or would you rather go for a stripped down GoPro? So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you have any questions, also let me know and see you guys in the next video.